Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning in to watch this wool and folk video. I am in my cozy corner because this is where I'm most comfortable and this is my safe space. And for this video, I needed to be in my safe space because I'm not quite sure how to put into words everything that we experienced Friday and how absolutely unacceptable that it was. So I actually didn't have makeup on and then I put makeup on, but I wasn't going to because I wasn't sure if I would cry it off. <laughs> So I'm not sure how this is going to go. So we decided to attend Cake Palooza and Wool and Folk this year based on what other people had said for previous years, how wonderful the Wool and Folk Festival has been. We usually do Cake Palooza and then we do Indie Untangled as those are my two favorite events. Then we heard of the Wool and Folk Festival that seemed to be an amazing time the last couple of years. Now come to find out that there have been issues and I'll get to that. But so we decided to go to Wool and Folk. I bought, bought early access tickets. So I think they were $35 and I needed two of them. So that cost me 70. If you bought tickets the same day, it was $50 a ticket and would have cost you a hundred for both of us for two tickets. So we're not going to talk about Cake Palooza in this video because that event was absolutely phenomenal and amazing. And you'll hear about it in my Ryan Beck video. I did not make it to Indie Untangled this year, which I'm very sad. That was a mistake. We decided to go to Wool and Folk. So <laughs> Wool and Folk, if you haven't heard, was an outdoor festival a festival that was advertised as having music, food, places to hang out, sit, knit, and enjoy yourself with vendors. There was supposed to be a podcaster meetup, uh, not meetup, but a podcaster event where they had different podcasters speak, the sponsors speak. I couldn't even tell you who the sponsors were this year because it wasn't advertised. <sighs> I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's start with the fact that this was supposed to be an outdoor venue in Saugerties or near Saugerties. I get an email about two or three weeks before the event. Actually, the email was placed on, I think it was October 16th is when I got a final email confirming the parking outlining the parking the email that i received for the parking automatically upset me and raised a red flag i am from new york i am from long island and the parking that was explained told me that there were going to be issues now i had a disabled person with me a physically disabled person with me, my friend Wanda. She walks with a cane and has mobility issues. When they sent down an email asking who needed handicap spaces, that email hit my inbox as I watched it because I had my email open at the time. I replied to that email saying that I needed handicap parking immediately. And I received an email back telling me that unfortunately there was such a um, a need for it and they weren't able to accommodate everyone, but not to worry because there will be parking. Okay. So we get to the event on Friday at, it started at 12 and it was supposed to go on till seven. We got there at 1230, thank God because if we would have gotten there at 12, we would have experienced the horrors that my friend Megan, she has a web, or, um, she has a YouTube and an Instagram. She is Penny Moons on Instagram and has the Fibromancer podcast. 
what they did to her when she tried to get in at noon was unacceptable. That's not my story, that's hers. I got there at 12.30. My husband dropped us off outside, pretty much at the door. The door, because there was none. He had a plot, uh, park 10 blocks away. At least. At least 10 blocks away. This event sold over 3,000 tickets. So we get there at 12.30, we get in, I can see Pacific, Nitco, and Fangirl Fibers have a booth on the left, and then there's a couple booths on the right of vendors, I'm not quite sure who they are. God, I wish if I had a photographic memory, I would name every single person that was there off the top of my head because everybody deserves to be a part of this story. There was vendors on the right and there was a narrow walkway the size of a regular sidewalk that you would have in front of your house for 3,000 people. We walk in, we're trying to see or even get into a booth, let alone just trying to move outside of the booth now this is happening outside and this is happening while it's raining and i haven't mentioned the rain yet because the rain was not the issue here it was raining at cake it was raining at indy we didn't experience any issues there was an issue for woolen folk so rain aside we're trying to figure out how this festival works so we're going around a sidewalk, trying to get through. Then there's like the main tent on the left, in the grass, in the mud, in the flooding. And I say flooding because apparently the venue was moved to the Catskills, 30 minutes away from Sauger Tees on the side of a hill or a mountain. So all of the rain was rushing down the hill straight into the festival, causing all of the problems that you would expect torrential downpour to cause. So now we have the main tent on the left. It has a couple vendors in there. It has the podcast place. I guess people were supposed to play music. Didn't see music didn't see podcasters or anyone talking. Now, I'm not going to take away from the podcasters because they were they showed up. The podcasters that were supposed to speak or be there apparently did show up. If they were there, when they were there, we could not see them. We could not get to them. So then there's a building on the right. It looks like a studio, an old studio, like a paint studio or something like you would have an old building. On the first floor, there is about, like, not even two full door spaces full of an opening to get through. So imagine you pull open double doors, and that's all the room that you have for everyone to walk through in and out of this building. So the first floor of this building is filled with so many vendors. They have... <laughs> There were so many vendors in this small space that you literally could not walk, get to anyone, breathe, move, you name it, couldn't get there. On the fifth, there was a sign, a piece of paper on the door saying, hey, there's vendors upstairs on the fifth floor, one and five. Okay. Okay. So we go to find the elevator to get to the fifth floor after struggling through the first floor. Uh, and I'm going to backtrack on all of this and let you know how that went. So we go up to the fifth floor on this tiny little elevator. I'm not sure how much weight that elevator is supposed to hold, but I'm pretty sure that it was old as hell. So imagine the tiniest elevator you could possibly imagine going up to the fifth floor and every knitter on the face of the planet trying to get into it 
there was a stairwell near the elevator as there is when you're trying to get upstairs in a building. The stairwell was tiny and it was full of people trying to go up and down with not enough room for people to go up and down at the same time. It wasn't even two people wide. It wasn't even two people wide. You couldn't do it. So now we have people standing in the stairwell trying to get down. We make it to the fifth floor. God knows who's up there. No one knows who's up there. There's no list. There's no map. There's no placement for vendors. There, this is as this is as a shopper. I'm I'm gonna get into what the vendors went through, but this is as a shopper. This is my experience. So, we get to the fifth floor, and those poor vendors didn't. I huh, I would be livid if they shoved me up there. It was tiny, and it was. Flat out dangerous. So we make it back down to the first floor. We get out of this building and we start following the tiny ass sidewalk around to where they have other tents lined up. So this whole thing is like winding through. I, the way that I could compare it is, even though there was not two buildings next to each other, imagine you're in New York City, and there's a building on your left, and there's a building on your right, and you're trying to go through the alleyway, except instead of having an alleyway, that alleyway is a sidewalk, because that's what this was. So, I am trying to get myself free of this crowd and find some place to just breathe for a second that was nowhere to be found so we go we fall on the sidewalk around then we go outside and then there's another building so there's another building that has stairs going up it so we go up the stairs and I see on the stairs poor Anna from Circle of Stitches in Salem, Massachusetts, who I love and adore, that place, and her, shoved in a stairwell that you would find in someone's house, almost. It was heartbreaking. It was devastating. And it was flat out unsafe. So there's vendors in this building. There's people trying to get through. Let me talk about what the vendors went through. Because I don't know if you remember who I am, but I didn't, st I've been in this community for a very long time. I started my knitting journey and Ravelry and the knitting community since 2009. I have watched people come and go. I have watched people grow, people step away. I've watched people gain relevance and lose relevance. And never in my entire time in this community have I ever seen anything so inconsiderate as what we went through on Friday. As a former vendor, I can tell you that this whole experience was downright traumatic. These vendors paid around $900 for a booth. That's Vogue Knit Live prices. That's prices that an established, well-known convention charges. And now you're charging $900 for your three-year event to brand new businesses, brand new makers, new artists and dyers. Some people like Magpie, who I encourage you to follow Magpie. I encourage you to follow everyone, but Magpie was a sponsor and so was Lola Bean Yarn Co. And they bought double booths. That's twice that amount. That's $1,800 a space. They were not given that space. 
all of those vendors were not given their spaces that they paid for. Their $900 when they show, okay, so from hearing everyone's stories and listening from the mouths of those who were there and my friends, these are not just vendors, guys. I am so upset about this because these are my fucking friends, okay, that were treated this way. $900 for a booth fee, and they were promised a 10 by 10 space. They were promised an indoor space, electricity, food vouchers, and everything that you would expect for a well-organized event to have. When they showed up on Thursday night to set up, there were no booth assignments. It was first come, first serve, free for all which one is unacceptable. When you plan an event, you plan your vendors specifically where you need them to be based on traffic, based on volume, based on how it's going to work with everyone there. First come, first serve is absolutely unacceptable. So now these vendors are trying to figure out how they are going to fit. Here's a couple stories for you. Desert Panda Fiber Arts, who did my advent calendar. I haven't said much about it because we have a lot going on. If you've been watching my vlog, I've been opening her advent. It's absolutely beautiful. What they did to her was completely unacceptable. As someone with mobility issues and who is disabled-bodied, they told her that she would be able to park her van or her trailer nearby and unload. Every artist deserves to be able to drive up and unload. There was nowhere for her to fit her trailer. From what I was told, she had to park blocks away and cart her inventory through the streets to get through the venue as a handicapped person. And when she showed up for her booth, she didn't have a space because I'm assuming she was supposed to be outside and she couldn't be based on her mobility issues. But let me just go back and say that no one was supposed to be outside. This was supposed to be an indoor event based on the rain. I'll get to that. So the one good thing about this event is that the vendors bended together and the knitting community came together and they made space for her. They pulled their booths apart and they put her inside so that she would be comfortable. She didn't have a space. She had a corner, as did most of those vendors that were shoved inside. So the reason why this event was moved in the first place from where it originally was set to be was because it was going to rain so the venue was moved to be indoors. W where indoors? There was no indoors. There, it was ridiculous. The event was moved three weeks before the actual, the venue was changed three weeks before the actual event. Vendors who, and people, not just vendors, vendors and customers alike, that have planned their trip and have purchased and laid down money for their Airbnbs and Saugerties now had to lose their deposit on their Airbnbs and move because the new venue was too far away. So now you have people losing money before they even get there. It moved because it was supposed to be indoors because it was supposed to be raining. That's why the venue moved. I think that's bullshit. I think the venue was moved, and this is my opinion, I think the venue was moved because it was poor planning. I think the venue was moved because they probably didn't book it in time. I don't know what happened. All I know is that we were lied to. Everyone was lied to. This event brought in upwards of $300,000, and I'm being generous in that estimation because I'm pretty sure it was a lot more. I don't want my money back. 
every vendor that was there, the money that was made from that event should be divided against the vendors and given to them as restitution for what they freaking went through this weekend. J'adore Fibers. Uh, an artist I hadn't heard of before. I'm linking every video that I come across for Woolen Folk and every story that I hear, I will be editing and linking them below in the description box. Jedor Fibers, booth flooded before the event. 15 minutes before the event was set to go off, She's trying to figure out what to do with her booth. She was able to squeeze into another booth with someone. So now we have vendors sharing booths that paid for 10 by 10 spaces. Botanical fibers or botanical yarn came from the UK. Their yarn, everyone's yarn is beautiful. Their yarn is no exception. It is absolutely stunning. It's not when it's in the dirt and the mud. It's not when it's laying on the ground. There were yarn, skeins of yarn being knocked in the ground because it, you couldn't avoid it. You couldn't move. Literally could not move. From what I guesstimated, not guesstimated, from what I was told, over 3,000 tickets were sold to this event. In a, it was like they, they put 3,000 people in a fishbowl. <laughs> you can't make this up. This went wrong on so many levels. Uh, I can't even begin to describe it. This is just my story. This is just my experience. I am not physically disabled. I am mentally, don't like to say disabled, but do I have mental issues? I absolutely do. I've always been transparent about that. I take a whole plethora of candies in the morning to make sure that my day goes off the way it's supposed to. How I didn't have a complete and utter meltdown or panic attack is only due to the fact that my husband, my friends, and my medication was there. Anyone suffering from any type of social anxiety probably left. They probably didn't even stay which is also a shame because they paid to be there. Let's talk about the food. There are supposed to be, this is a food festival event. There are supposed to be food trucks for 3,000 people. Three. Three food trucks. Oysters. Vegan. What was the third food truck? Uh, vegan barbecue and oysters. Barbecue. That's it. Forget the fact that, like, those are three very specific types of food that not everyone can eat. Three food trucks for over 3,000 people. So, the vendors were supposed to get food vouchers so that they could eat. Reading the stories online from different vendors there, those poor people didn't get food. They didn't get water. Uh, one of the vendors, like it, I will be linking their stories, like I said, one of the vendors sent a friend to go get water for her and she returned later, like 15 or 20 minutes later and couldn't find water. They couldn't get to the bathroom. Magpie Fibers was, Booth was in front of the bathroom, blocking the bathroom. That's where they put them in front of the bathroom where a line forms. I mean, we're women. There's always a line at the women's bathroom. Why would you put it, her, the sponsor of the show, in front of one of the busiest places? On top of all this, I said it was dangerous. 
Had there been an emergency as someone, if someone would have yelled fire, shooter, gunshots, bomb, there would have been so many people hurt. If there was a fire, we would have all burned, especially if you were caught in the building. There was no way to get out. I am so upset and so angry because, like I said, these are my friends we're talking about. These are people that I've grown to know and love in the fiber community, and that includes all of you. I spoke about this event. I said I was going. I said I would beat some of you there. And I put you all in an unsafe position unknowingly because I was put in an unsafe position. I was lied to. We were all lied to, every single one of us. We were made promises that were not fulfilled. And our basic human right to safety was violated and taken away. You failed, woolen folk, you failed to provide a safe, accessible venue for your community. And now the community is speaking up. I will not shut up about this. I will continue to speak out against this until someone pays. And by that, I don't mean revenge. I mean, until someone makes this right and does what is right by every single one of us there. The apology that was given was not an apology. I'll do better next year. There won't be a next year. If I have anything to say about it, because I know I'm not going. Woolen Folk, you're dead to me. I will not be going to a Woolen Folk event unless Woolen Folk gets completely bought out or taken over by a completely different panel of organizers. Now, I want to stress that the sponsors of this show, Lola Bean, Magpie, Lamb and Kid, I'm actually not mentioning Lamb and Kid for a specific reason. Go figure it out. <laughs> I don't mean that to be mean. I'm just saying, go read their Instagram and you'll see why. Those sponsors had nothing to do with organizing this event and are just as much victims as everyone else is. So... Why I'm so upset about this is because this event was so big and so many people went to it and had a negative experience. What do you think happened? Saturday at Rhinebeck and Sunday. I used to be an air traffic controller for the Air Force for 14 years. I have had my hearing tested and my hearing is phenomenal. I can pick up sounds that most people can't pick up with their ears. All I could hear at Rhinebeck on Saturday surrounding me in all the whispers and all the conversations here and there, loud and soft, everyone's shock and horror over what they experienced on Friday. That's what you did, Woolen Folk. You traumatized a whole group of people and almost took away from their experience from the thousands of dollars that we paid to be there. Yeah, thousands. My Airbnb was $1,600. That was just the Airbnb. I stayed from Thursday till Monday to attend these festivals. The vibe in Rhinebeck was completely off. Rhinebeck delivered. Rhinebeck was everything that it should have been. And you'll hear about it in my Rhinebeck Rewind because it was an, ab an absolutely amazing experience. Except for the overall mood. I had people coming up to me on Saturday asking me if I was okay. 
because you could see it on my face that I was not okay. I was so drained. I've never been drained like that. These pre-Rhinebeck events are set to kick off Rhinebeck in a good light and start your weekends off right. And you have people's heads spinning and reeling from what happened on Friday. And that affected them. And it affected us. And it affected Rhinebeck. Did I have a good time? Absolutely, I did. People are telling me that, you know, I'm so sad I didn't get to make it to Rhinebeck this year, you know, all that. And I'm telling them, don't worry about it. Because this year, this year was off. Next year will be better. I'm saying, I'm telling them, don't worry, you missed this year. It's okay. Next year will be better. It has to be better. We have to do better. This can't happen again. 10 years. I've been going to festivals for over 10 years, and this has never happened. <laughs> I I go to so many festivals. I've been to Indie, Cake, Maryland Sheep and Wool, Wool and Folk. I have vended at Stitches before they shut down. Stitches South. I have vended at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I have seen so many events, small and large, and none have done this to me. So... What can we do now moving forward? I encourage you all to please support these vendors. I will be copying the links and posting the links to everyone in the description box for you to visit them and support them. Supporting them isn't just monetary. We don't all have money. I know I don't right now. And when I go through my yarn back haul and everything and, and show you guys all the wonderful things I bought and all the amazing makers, you'll see how great everything was. But for this, I'm just so thrown off. Like, Like, my head is literally spinning. Support these makers in other ways. Hear their voices. Know that they're not lying. They're not exaggerating. Listen to their stories. Share their stories. Share their Instagrams. Share their posts. By sharing, maybe you don't have the money, but maybe someone else does. Share their story, give them a like, give them a follow, and give them your undivided attention because right now they need it. They're hurting. They have taken a loss. They have been through some shit this weekend and they need you. We have been divided in this community for so long over one thing or another and this is the time for us to stand together as one voice over one event and common ground and move forward together and stand for everything that this community is supposed to stand for. Love, acceptance, accessibility, sharing, promoting, artistry, creativity. That's what this community is about. Please, I beg you, please put your differences aside for whatever. If you have anything going on against any of these people or you, they're not particularly your cup of tea, whatever, put all that aside and understand what these people just went through and give them your love and give them your support. I've never been negative on this channel and I don't intend to be going forward. But there's one thing that I'm going to do and is I'm going to keep it real. And if some shit like this happens, you're going to hear about it, especially if I'm involved. Because this time, this was done to me. This is my story. I was there. 
I saw this with my own eyes. You cannot tell me what did or didn't happen because I witnessed it and I lived it. So with that being said, <laughs> I'm gonna try to end on a positive note because this is such a negative experience, but I'm gonna end on the positive with support your family, support this family, support this community, and all the love that I have taught you throughout this entire three years that I've been on this podcast journey, take everything that I have said to heart and spread kindness, spread love, joy, and acceptance. And this time, everyone comes together and help. Please help. I love you all. I will have my vlog videos out. I will have the Rhinebeck Rewind video out probably tomorrow because I haven't even been able to film it because my joy was almost literally snuffed out this weekend. I don't want that coming through in my video. I want this video to be the only time that you ever see me this way. And I'm gonna keep it that way. Have an amazing day. Have an amazing time. And I will see you all in the next video. I love you and from the bottom of my heart, thank you for listening to me.